Hi guys, welcome back to Medical Coder Life. Today we're continuing our series on physician documentation and today we're talking about the discharge summary. The discharge summary is a summation of the patient's course while in the hospital. It is typically associated with an admission into an inpatient setting. You don't usually see a discharge summary on an outpatient chart or any other type healthcare setting, but on an inpatient setting, you do see a discharge summary. The summary begins with the reason for admission into the hospital and includes a chronological description of significant findings from examination and tests as well as procedures and therapies performed along with the patient's response to such treatments. Details regarding the discharge are also recorded, including the condition on discharge, instructions specifying medications, findings or level of physical activity, the patient's diet, any follow-up care, and patient teaching. So, see the physician also details further care after discharge on this discharge summary. The discharge summary should complete, be complete immediately after discharge. Guys, remember in my past life, I was director of a medical record department or an HIM department. And I know if you tell a physician something is due by tomorrow, you'll be lucky if you get it tomorrow. So with joint commission and DHEC requiring that this discharge summary be completed within 30 days of discharge, as the director of HIM, I required that discharge summary to be complete within two weeks of discharge and that allotted me two additional weeks to beg and plead with the physician to get this discharge summary done. So don't wait till the last minute. If you're ever in a supervisory position to get documentation from a physician, piece of advice, don't wait till that date to request it. You will never get it. They're just too busy. So, a final progress note, however, may substitute for a discharge summary when the stay is less than 48 hours um, with minor problems, such as an uncomplicated delivery or a normal neonate. Those are examples of uncomplicated admissions. The discharge summary is that document that most people take with them to their next setting of care. Discharge summaries can also be referred to as a transfer summary if your patient is transferred out to another facility. So again, the discharge summary is a summary of that patient's stay while in the hospital. So as a coder, I looked forward to that discharge summary because ultimately it will give you your final diagnoses. And in preparing for this um, video and trying to put my personal touches on it, I tried to think of how I can best describe a discharge su summary for you and how you as a coder can use it to your advantage. As I'm reading a chart when a patient's discharged and the discharge summary is not on there yet and there's some documentation that I really need my physician to, to clarify, was it sepsis, was it E. coli, staph, or strep? Um, if I need a little more clarification, I found that I could use the fact that I know a discharge summary was required on that chart and when I queried him I will say please in your discharge summary could you specify whether or not this patient is septic or was it Staphylococcus aureus or was it MRSA I could use the knowledge that I have of knowing that that chart required a discharge summary to ask for additional documentation for the physician so that he could dictate it or put it in this form. And again, if it's less than a 48 hour stay, 48 hours or less stay, it can be a final physician progress note, a thorough final physician progress note will suffice for the discharge summary. Um, but again, let me show you a quick sample of a discharge summary so that when you see it, you'll know the form. Ooh. Okay, notice it's got the header, 
discharge summary. It identifies your patient with your patient name, medical record number, admission date, discharge date, and guys here, notice it's got attending physician and dictated by. Then it says primary care physician, referring physician, consulting physician. Again, we really have to identify physicians involved in care because these days, your attending physician could admit you to the hospital and what's called a hospitalist could be taking care of you while there. So again, and then if you do bring in a consulting physician, that has to be identified. And note that says condition on discharge. As a coder, that's what I'm looking for. You have your final diagnoses right there. And a note says list primary diagnoses first. Any procedures that were performed on the patient. And then history of present illness. Any laboratory data on your patient. Oops, I skipped up a little too far. Yeah, there goes laboratory data. Your hospital course. And notice under hospital course, I got by problem list, not by date. So again, you want your physician to go into detail with what was wrong with this patient while in the hospital. Any discharge medications, most important, list meds that are different from when they came in, okay? Discharge instructions, any follow-up appointments, and notice it says code status. And then I've always seen dictated at the bottom, dictated by, so I put that down there. But again, some facilities put it at the top, okay? All right, thanks guys. I just wanted to show you a sample form of a discharge summary. All right. Thanks guys. I'll see you in the next one. We'll be doing a history and physical.